that it, of course, is raising a child. And the trying times can begin the instant you leave the hospital with a newborn. In tonight's program, we'll look at how to baby-proof your home and reduce the stress of parenthood. But first, let's explore those all-important health issues. A little bit later on, by the way, I'll be joined by a pediatrician to discuss childhood immunizations. But first, is your baby's cough simply that? A cough? Or is it a symptom of something more serious? And how does a new parent tell the difference? Producer Kathy Anderson, a mom herself, has some helpful advice. No, baby. <coughs> Surprise. You've read all the books, talked with family and friends, and you're ready to be a new parent. Not... The first time he spit up um, a whole stomach, which was, you know, you thought he was going to die or something like that, he immediately called, you know, his family. You know, they had just had, his cousin had just had baby. were like, you know, why did Brian do that? Because he didn't do it till he was about probably a week and a half old. You know, and then we're like, should we feed him again? You know, we completely panicked. Shannon and Patrick Rice are the proud parents of two-month-old Ryan. He's healthy, developing and growing right on schedule. But for his mom and dad, being a parent is not easy. When the baby's born and, you know, they hand you your baby and you go home, you know, and we'd look at each other and be like, do you think he's hungry? You know, do you, do you think he needs this? And I don't know. Mm. So, it's, it's funny. He, I wish he could tell us. But I guess that's our job. To but figure you can kind of tell now, like, like the different ways that he cries, you can tell, like, whether he's hungry or, I mean, or, like, if something's, like, like really wrong, like, you can tell, like, if, if he's not feeling well or if he has, like, a, you know, a stomach ache or something like that, he, he cries differently. It takes a long time to get used to that, though. I, I think we're still not quite used to it, but he, it gets better a little bit. Do they get any formula at all or pretty much um, primarily? Okay, good. So they Dr. Can do Howard Golf is a pediatrician who is a parent who understands the worries of first-time moms and dads. Even something as, as uh, basic as, as crying, uh, all babies kind of have a fussy period in the evening and it can go on for even a few hours where they're eating more and they're a little bit more fretful. And that's a real normal aspect of, of baby care. But to a parent who didn't expect this, it's, it's, it's uh, um, sometimes assumed to be a problem and, and just talking about it and reassuring them about it is uh, often all that they uh, are looking for. Um, questions about frequency of feedings. Uh, babies don't adhere to schedules and they're quite variable in how well they eat at a particular feeding, how frequently they eat, and uh, uh, how, how much they eat. Um, and the uh, schedule might be that they're, well, they might be hungry after an hour and a half sometimes and after four hours, and that that's okay, that they don't adhere to a clock or to a time schedule. The doctor has written a book, a parent survival guide, and regularly contributes advice columns to the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. He says new parents will learn a great deal about their child in his or her first six to eight months of life. I usually start with something like Cheerios because they're round, no sharp edges, very uniform, a little mush easily, okay. and they may gag on them, but they're not going to choke on them. About feeding. He says breastfeeding is best if possible, if only for the first two weeks. But after that, I, I actually recommend that they take, uh, that they offer them a bottle, maybe once a day, once every other day, in the evening, with a little express breast milk, a little formula, even an, a little water, not for any nutritional reason, but just to know that that baby will take a bottle. So if at two or three months of age, they, they try to do that for the first time because of reasons of, of returning to work or uh, being on some me medication that precludes breastfeeding for a while, uh, or whatever reason, that baby won't refuse a bottle, which they often will do if they haven't at least seen one on some sort of semi-regular basis. Doctors, the media, and the government encourage, if not demand, immunizations for children to prevent diseases such as pertussis, diphtheria, polio, mumps, and measles. But some new parents may worry about side effects. Like everything in our daily lives, there are uh, risks and benefits that have to be weighed, and there are some slight risks, statistically slight, even though when they occur they're significant, to uh, anything we do, including vaccinations. But the vast majority of the population benefits from it. And, and when we talk about the benefits of the vaccines uh, exceeding the risks, we're talking about population decisions. That if we didn't vaccinate, we would have much, much, much greater numbers of affected infants with diseases that we have forgotten about. And while it's natural to be concerned when a baby has a runny nose or cough, Gallup says that's not necessarily a reason to panic. 
colds are the most frequent infectious disease that we see and ear infections are the most common complication of the common cold and to some extent uh, I, I believe uh, philosophically that common community uh, viral illnesses garden variety illnesses are part of wellness they help us uh, stimulate our immune system to respond to these viruses and these illnesses that we say are self-limited. In other words, your body fights them off by yourself. Take care of pediatric therapist joining us this morning. What are some of the issues that parents seem to worry about when their children start growing up? Well, in general, one of the things that parents want to know about is that their child is growing physically but also developing along normal lines socially and uh, cognitively. And